So, so selfishly, and we've spoken about this, and I also put it in my own review, is that I think the book can lend itself to being female focused, right? And yeah. it can lend itself to being a book that does focus and highlight women's issues through relationships or through life and all that stuff and how they overcome. And socially, I think that's very important anyway because of everything that females are going through, like, right. you know, the substandard, I guess, perceptions, expectations that they need to be a little more meek or a little more, like you said, put on a face and impress, right? right. And, and I think that is, it has a big proponent to do with how life happens, but I, having read the book and having had a perceived notion of what I expected it to be at a 34-year-old male, was pleasantly surprised that it wasn't that. And the one thing that I I would take from that is that the interviewees, while being strong female figures, if you take out their names and if you take out the pronouns, does allow the gap to be bridged between a female and a male having the same like issues in life or even just any sort of perception or 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 stuckness right and so you brought up a point that you and i had not spoken about was that you did have a 50 percent male audience read this yes to make sure that there was no negative feedback or no bashing but no male bashing did you take into consideration not just the fact that men would take this negatively but also that they'd be able to relate to it and what was their reaction when reading the book and how did you change anything in the book to meet their concerns? Yeah, I mean, I, I, originally the t- title was Swiping Right After 50, so it was going to be more about dating, and so it was going to be female to female advice about dating, and then it just kept getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And, um, you know, I had um, one person say, um, why do you have 50 on here? This could help people much younger, and this is not an age-related group of information <laughs> and um, and then that's what made me start thinking about the male and Lindsay the one who I told the story about a minute ago uh, he was the first male I had read it because he's just a dear dear friend and he's extremely sensitive male and I said I need I need any I, you're my radar I don't I don't I, I you know I, like I said earlier, I love men. My dad's a man. My brother's a man. I think I think men are wonderful and beautiful, and um, and so it was important to me that they not feel isolated from the information. And I really thought about going back and trying to integrate two or three men into it, but two two men independently said to me, "I think that's a different book." Like swipe the swipe right effect for men would be something they would be more likely to pick up. This still works for men. It's still really good information one way or the other. And I, I agree. If I took the pronouns out, I think it would be you know when somebody loses a child, they lose a child. It doesn't matter if you're a mother or father. If you lose a spouse, you've lost a spouse. It doesn't matter if it's a wife or husband. And so, and if you go through a divorce, you know, the themes are universal. The themes are universal. And so. Um, yeah, I, I think I think the best way to address it is to go hear from men and, and interview ten men, like I did ten women, and and write that book. Um, yeah, because I think the rest of it is universal. Agreed, and I don't I don't think that you know, but me, I was just saying from my personal experience, if if the pronouns weren't there and the names weren't there, then you're right, it is a universal topic. And my follow up question would have been for people that are here, because a lot of this can be word of mouth, and it can be people promoting it from being here and knowing you and doing book signings and all this stuff, how would they go ahead and then disclose that to other people to convince them to get the book when they already possibly have a preconceived notion? And I think you already addressed that, which is the themes are relatable and they are transferable and it doesn't matter what your gender is, what your situation is, or what your name is, that you can go through that. So I think having that messaging is really important for everybody. Yeah, and if you go look on Amazon and you look at my reviews, um, almost half of them, like I would say 40, 45% of them are male. Mm-hmm. And it's shocking <laughs> and, and beautiful. And it, the first couple of times I just cried. I couldn't, as people I didn't know. I mean, it's one thing when my, the guy I've been dating does one, you know, like I, you know, that's, I, I appreciate it. But when a stranger, a male gets on and, and says, this book helped me, this book changed my perception of things. Um, one was a divorce lawyer and said, I want to give this book to my clients. Hmm. 
So I, you know, that it's, I think, and one of them, which was, um, the headline was better, not bitter. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, because I think there is the conception of women being uh, bitter after a divorce or a scorned woman or whatever. And instead, you, you know, how much more beautiful is life going to be if you choose to be better? And instead of being angry all the time. But if you read chapter four, you'll see I was pretty angry. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I do, I do think the messages are universal, and I hope, I hope men will read it. But I, I do think a great follow is to let men tell their story. So. Thank you. Thank you.